Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the AGRC Ford FD413 16 by 16 mini stack. In this video I'm going to go over its features, measure the output strength of the included VTX, and then show you some flight footage of the AGRC Parrot 120 Pro which is using the same stack and a separate review should be up in the next few days. The FD413 mini stack is available in two versions one including the VTX and one without it. The version that includes only the 4-in-1 EC and the flight controller cost $40 and the version that includes the VTX cost $47 which is a pretty good price considering that just the VTX cost $15. The version that I'm going to test in this video is of course the one that includes the VTX. Inside the box you can find first of all some stickers, a 470 microfarad 25 volts capacitor, a 13 ampere BLLES 4-in-1 ESC, an F4 flight controller which comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.0.4, a 48 channels VTX that supports smart audio using IRC TRUM protocol, it has a selectable output strength of 25, 100, 200 and 400 millivolts, and it's using an IPX antenna connector. In addition, you are also getting a high quality XT30 battery connector, which is pre soldered to 16 AWG battery leads, a harness for connecting the 4 in 1 ESC in the flight controller, a 4 pins connector for the VTX, a simple linear antenna with an IPX connector, a bag with M2 spacers and screws, the user manual for the VTX, and the assembly diagrams for the flight controller and the 4 in 1 ESC. All the boards are using 16x16 16 16 M2 mounting holes. The outer dimensions of the 4-in-1 ESC is 23.9 by 22.9 by 5.4 mm and it weighs 3.3 grams. The outer dimensions of the flight controller are 22.4 by 21.1 by 6 mm and it weighs 2.5 grams. The outer dimensions of the VTX are 20 by 20 by 4.1 millimeters and it weighs only 1.5 grams. The weight of all the bolts together is 7.2 grams. After adding the linear antenna the weight is 8 grams. After adding the capacitor the total weight is 8.9 grams and the weight including the harness for connecting the 4-in-1 ESC and the flight controller is 9.4 grams so that's pretty light for a 16 by 16 stack. In comparison, the weight of the AGRC Zeus, which is an F4 flight controller with an integrated 4-in-1 BLLES 15 ampere ESC, is 6.6 grams. In terms of features, both 4-in-1 ESC and flight controller support lighter batteries between 2 to 4 cells. They are connected to each other using a harness, which is good news for those of you who hate pin headers, which can break easily in case of a crash. The 4-in-1 ESC features some pretty big MOSFETs considering its size and it can support a peak current of 15 amperes for 5 seconds. On the right side of the flight controller you can find the soldering pads for the camera and for the VTX. So over here you can find the video in, then plus 5 volts, ground, TX1 for the smart audio feature of the VTX, ground, plus 5 volts and video out. On the back you can find the soldering pads for connecting your receiver. So over here you can find TX2, RX2, 3.3 volts for DSMX receivers, ground, plus 5 volts, SBUS and RX1 pads. On the left side you can find pads for a buzzer and an LED unit. Over here you can find a physical boot button and on the bottom over here you can find the micro USB port. In total, this flight controller features two UART ports. One is going to be used for your radio receiver and the second one probably for the smart audio feature of the VTX. But if you'd like, you can also configure this VTX manually and then use the extra UART port for accessories such as a GPS unit. As I mentioned before, the VTX supports 48 channels, features smart audio using IRC TRUM protocol, its walking voltage is 5 volts, and it has a selectable output strength of 25, 100, 200 and 400 millivolts. On the top side of the VTX you can find a configuration button for setting up the frequency and output strength manually. Over here a 4 pins connector and on the bottom you can also find soldering pads so it adds some redundancy in case this connector is going to break. Now let's measure the output strength of the VTX. 
The frequency is set to 5740, and when the VTX is set to 25 millivolts, I'm getting around 15 millivolts. When it's set to 100 millivolts, I'm getting around 56 millivolts. On 200 millivolts, I'm getting around 110 millivolts. And when it's set to 400 millivolts, I'm getting between 250 and 280 millivolts. Now I'm going to let the VTX run for a minute on 400 millivolts, and then I'm going to measure its temperature. After a minute, the output strength was down to around 150 millivolts, and the maximum measured temperature was almost 90 degrees Celsius, so it's important to keep the VTX cooled, and I do not recommend to set it on the bench for 400 millivolts for too long, because probably it's going to eventually burn. And I recommend to set the VTX power on this arm to on, so in that case, when the quadcopter is going to be disarmed, the VTX is going to be set to 25 millivolts, and only when you are going to arm the quadcopter, it's going to be set to your desired option. In order to set it up, you have to head over to Betaflight CLI, and then type VTX underscore low underscore power underscore disarm equals on, type save, hit enter, and then this option is going to be enabled. So overall, considering its features and mainly its price, the AGRC FD413 looks like a great option in case you would like to build your own toothpick style lightweight quadcopter. Now I'm going to show you some flight footage of the Parrot 120 and the full review should be up in the next few days. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.